मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून पा अस्सलाम वालेकुम मैम वालेकुम सलाम मैम गेस्ट जॉइंड मैम हां गुड आफ्टरनून यस 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 मैम इज कमिंग गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम मैम हामिद ने सा मैम सर हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट मैम ओके नमस्कार हम हामिद ने गुड आफ्टरनून या फाइन टॉपिक for today's session yeah. it's very important uh has anyone got any like a pre prepared questions or anything like that ma'am yeah your voice is breaking ma'am oh is it Yes, Dr. Sel, Dr. Sel. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'll come ma within five. I'll come within five minutes. Okay. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay, my voice breaking. Okay, let me swap off ah. my uh, internet. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, we'll wait for two minutes. Then we'll uh, start the program, ma'am. Yeah, no problem. Is it working now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Audible, ma'am. Okay.
Ma'am, shall we start, Ma'am? Oh yes, Ma'am. Ma'am, Tanya, Ma'am. Yes, yes. Shall we start, Ma'am? Ready, Ma'am? Yes. Yes, yes. Ma good health and good sense are greatest blessings of life. Health is like money. We never have a true idea of its value until we lose it. Good afternoon, women are present here. Greetings from Justice Bashi Rahma Syed College for Women. Welcome to the international webinar on health management organizing by the Department of Commerce afternoon session. A day without prayer is a day without blessing. And a life without prayer is a life without power. We'll start the event with the blessings of Almighty with invocation. I request Mrs. Zenith Ma'am to recite few verses from Holy Quran. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar rahmanir rahim Maliki yawmid deen Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihtina sirat al-mustaqim Mirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghair al-maghzubi alayhim Walad-dhalin Ameen Opening Surah Al-Fatiha Chapter 1 of Holy Quran in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, master of the day of requital. You alone do we worship and you alone guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors not of those upon whom thy wrath is drawn down, nor of those who have gone astray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, please excuse me, Selvi ma'am, your mic is off. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. A healthy lifestyle not only changes your body, it changes your mind, your attitude and your mood. Kindness is always fashionable and always welcome. I request our head of the Department of Commerce afternoon session, Mrs. Hamidunisa, ma'am, to welcome the gathering. Assalamu alaikum and very good evening to one and all present here. There is a famous saying by Dr. Abdul Kalam, I quote, learning gives creativity. Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge and knowledge makes you great. I unquote. It, I deemed it as a privilege in welcoming the gathering on behalf of the Department of Commerce for an international webinar on health management. At the outset, I would like to welcome the chief guest of the day, Dr. Tanya, founder and director, Amtan Medical Group, Australia. I also extend a warm welcome to our beloved principal, Dr. Mrs. Shaina Samad, Vice Principal Dr. Fidos Jahan, and Administrative Officer Mrs. Smatina Fassi, and faculties of various colleges and JBS College, and my dear students. We have an eminent and dynamic personality amidst us, and it is a pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Tanya, a medical practitioner and CEO of Ampton Medical, a chain of medical centers in Gold Coast, Australia. She is a successful cosmetic brand innovator as well. She has developed several cosmetic products and devices under the brand name Dr. Tanya. She has won several accolades for her business acumen. In 2020, she was awarded with the prestigious Assempreneur Award, the Iconic Women Award by Women Econo Economic Forum. Entrepreneur of the Year by Indian Achievers Forum. She is the member of Lok Kerala Sabha. In 2019, she has awarded as the Young Entrepreneur of the Year of the Year Australia. In the Year Australia. 
Dr. Tenya is also the national chairperson of the health chapter of Australia India Business School. She has developed EVE project for mentoring aspiring women entrepreneurs in India. She is also the chairperson of O Chandu Menon Foundation, a non-profit organization set up in memory of her great grandfather, who was the very first novelist in Malayalam. Dr. Tanya is also a prolific dancer and a small child artist in Malayalam movies. I once again welcome you, Madam, for accepting our invitation in spite of your busy schedule. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Ma'am. Now I request yeah. our eminent resource person, Dr. Tanya, Ma'am, to take over the session. Please, Ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Selvi, Ma'am. Hamridina Sa ma'am and Zainad ma'am, it was really uh, a beautiful opening um, and uh, of course um, the introduction was really um, heartwarming. Thank you very much and of course thank you Selvi ma'am for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. It's, I'm really humbled and it feels really good to be a part of um, young aspiring uh, community uh, students who wants to make a difference and uh, yeah thank you very much so today's presentation or today's topic is health management when is the when is more better time that we talk about health than right now what we are going through that is the pandemic how many of you have have you ever even imagined that we would reach this situation ever in our entire life? No. Where we, we, we took a lot of things for granted. We, we took our daily living, um, our activities, everything for granted. But here we are in the middle of pandemic and a complete life-changing situation so what's changed how has it affected us how has this impacted your life how has this pandemic impacted our life and how it has impacted the world economy it's been an extreme or a huge wake-up call to everybody that health is wealth everything has changed but one thing remains the same that we need to more so now look after ourselves look after our health look after the health of our family and close pe people who you closely interact so i'm really happy that we're discussing this I would really like to understand um, or take questions. I'm, I don't mind being interrupted either. And rather than me giving lectures, I would love to know and understand from you all, what are your concerns? What are your health concerns? Is there anything that you are particularly worried about? Um, because it's we are in the middle of pandemic. You may be worried about the future. You may be worried about your health now. You may be worried about uh, the vaccination coming. You may be worried about how it's going to actually impact your your work life, how it's going to impact everything coming in the future. So yeah, please uh, feel free to have a discussion with me. I'm happy to share what I know and what I can um, I can think of. So to begin with, um, yeah, this is a slide from a women's health conversation that I've had. And there I had met with a group of ladies and um, the whole point of the discussion was to reinforce that we women should focus on our health. And I would like to reinforce that, yes, it is not just women, all of us should. But if you're a woman, you probably are the decision maker. When you have a family, you get a family, you are the decision maker. So your health 
is extremely important and if you are empowered with the right knowledge of how to look after your health how to manage your needs how to look after your nutrition then you make the right choice for your entire family so with the uh with this situation where we are now and you have got ongoing responsibilities of studying submitting projects submitting deadlines how how are you looking up to yourself is there anything different is there anything special you are doing is there any way that we can um i would be able to um talk to the students so if they can actually chat seven them is there any any chance so i can make it a little bit more interactive and understand what they have how they are uh, what are their thoughts ma'am you can continue ma'am okay fine all right um so basically the first and foremost thing that i would like to um suggest to everybody is nutrition is very important most of most students i know in student life you generally skip breakfast when you do skip breakfast you you are probably you just grab a cup of coffee and go go to your um, studies or get into your computer these days online studies and things like that but it is important that you eat a good and healthy breakfast now when you look at the breakfast what you normally eat um uh, make sure it's a healthy one that that means it's not there's not much fried items there it's a balanced one having high proteins um what i would strongly recommend is that have the biggest meal say the biggest meal in the morning it's a bit like you eat like a king during morning and lunch time you eat no more and dinner time just more on the smaller meals i know most of us do the opposite so that is where i would recommend the pattern of diet should be so that's your morning so have have a healthy breakfast and if you can start today with a glass of water first before you have the breakfast that's even better so when it comes to the nutrition side uh lunch is extremely important as well because it kind of gives you the fuel so you are probably tempted to at uh, college or when you travel and stuff to skip lunch but make sure you give yourself the enough to fuel that you can keep going and finally dinner instead of having a big portion of dinner that you're compensating for the whole day have smaller now you probably want will be wondering oh we know all that or why is uh, dr tanya talking about it but let me tell you something these are little changes that makes you feel better not just physically but also emotionally because that's something that you are doing for yourself and with the right nutrition with the right um amount of balanced food your focus your concentration and your physical activities everything improves the bloatedness and that comes down as well so have to think about what you're eating there's so many sources out there so it is important to have a look at all that now even in um, the food items i'm happy to talk about it more and more and more um it's just one of my favorite things uh now since the covid and we all talk about boosting immunity boosting immunity is very important now but how do you do it how do you boost immunity so there probably is so many things in the market you know you drink that you eat that it is it's not like it's a quick fix you have something 
and your immunity gets better. It's not that at all. It is a combination of how you're living. It's a combination of reducing stress levels. It's a combination of having a good night's sleep. It's a combination of actually living a cleaner, healthier, toxin-free life with the balanced diet. It's a combination of all of this that makes you better, feel better, and helps you with the immunity. I'm not saying you eat well and you get rid of the COVID. It's not about that at all. And I don't want to claim any of that. But what I do want to actually inform you is now is the time that you reflect on what you're doing. Okay, so one little tip that I would tell you is that if anybody glorifies that being burnt out and working hard, overworked, is and you know it's it's a part of um, uh, being very entrepreneurial. But I would certainly, actually, from my years of experience, I would say that yes, we have have been in that situation. But hand on heart, I tell you, if you could not do that, if you could focus more on yourself and your health. Giving that the first priority, not getting burnt out, not taking over work, not getting overloaded with so many different things, that will make you more healthier and you can survive more. So again, so I'm talking about stress here, aren't I? You would have guessed I'm talking about stress. Stress is a very, very very, very dangerous factor. In our day-to-day life, we all undergo a lot of stress. We all undergo a lot of pressure. But what does the stress do? What does it do to you? Have you wondered? You're probably thinking only of depression, anxiety, sleeplessness and things. But it does have further impact on our health. Now, what does what does that mean? Okay, stress, whatever it could be, stress from outside world, stress from um, your own mental anxiety, stress before exams, or you got to pay rent, you got to pay bills. All of that is stress. So these things does actually make an impact in your physical body as well as your mental health. So how does this affect the physical body? Very simple. Straightforward, you lose your sleep, you don't sleep enough, that sleeplessness can raise so many different issues like increased blood pressure, um, low concentration in the morning, unable to focus, increased inflammation in the body. So the rest that your body actually needs on a day-to-day basis, you're not getting the stress actually stops you from getting all the rest the body needs because nighttime is when the body repairs itself. So as a result, what happens to you? As a result, you end up waking tired. You end up waking really drained. You end up actually having headaches. You end up having high blood pressure. You end up having not wanting to do things. So it affects you at so many different multiple layers that you can even imagine. So stress is a major villain and we'll come a bit later about how can we manage stress. So the other other aspect, as I said, is um, diet, sleep, stress, sleeplessness i'll come back to sleeplessness exercise so you must be wondering oh we can't do anything we are at home we we, we, we don't want to go out it's stressful to go out because of covid we can have any number of excuses but let me tell you something there is no one here that who can't spare a few minutes say 10 15 minutes two or three times a week just two to three times a week at home, wherever you are, 
do a little bit of exercise wherever you are. You don't need to go to gym. You don't need a lot of equipment. You just need simple tools, simple things that will help your heart rate go up and then it settles down, increasing your muscle. It is, an, it is simple to do. And when you can combine that exercise, maybe, maybe it's a yoga type of exercise. It could be yoga. Combine that with meditation. You would be doing the best favor to yourself ever. So take it from me. If you can do 10, 15 minutes, two to three times a week, combine that with a bit of meditation. Has anyone had an experience of proper meditation? I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you would have experienced what meditation actually is. But it becomes very effective. And this I'm telling you from my personal experience. Maybe I should tell my own story now. Um, I have been extremely burnt out, juggling a lot of roles doing a lot of different things so I wake up in the morning not refreshed very tired um, having a lot of things in my brain going vroom, 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 vroom. and I have to grab my phone because I have to keep writing notes because I'll keep I'll remember I will not be able to remember what needs to be achieved that day so there's so much of things in my head then my day starts with my little ones i've got two little children i've got a household to run and then i have to get ready and go to go to work so it's been a lot of stress it's been a lot of work so i realized that something needs to be done but i just didn't know what to do i just didn't know how to do it i just didn't know how i can help myself so it went on and on a whole year went on with coping from one day to another day to another day so people ask me how do you manage and my answer has always been at the time I just cope I don't manage I just live with it so it was until only very um, few months ago it hit me that I am actually burnt out it's really started affecting how I feel, how I carry myself, and my whole demeanor. Um, even my close friends and family started noticing that I'm burnt out because it affected my mood and uh, my patience and stuff. So I realized if I don't do anything about it, I'm going to end up having high blood pressure, the cholesterol problems, any inflammatory things. Um, anything that you can think of as a result of stress, not sleeping, everything, everything bad that the body can have, including not eating well, not eating at all, skipping meals, you name it, that was my lifestyle. So I realized this is high time that I actually look after myself and then reflect and see how I can improve. So this is not a quick fix. This will not be overnight change. It's a process. It's taken me several months to achieve what I've achieved now. And I still think that there is more to achieve. Because while you're looking after yourself, you still have every responsibility that you always had. Like your family is still there, your work is still there, your responsibility is still there. for you guys you still have all your um, studies everything but it is important to stop think and reflect on your own health so that you can be better or let me put it this way a better version of yourself don't you all want that yes we all want to be a better version of, of ourselves and Yes, I started to look at where I can actually fix myself first. So uh, definitely diet has been the top of my 
list because I skip meals and not eating well. So I'm, I won't say that I've achieved everything, but in the process. So I started incorporating having green tea. Now, green tea doesn't mean just that the normal green tea. You know, in India, there's so many different that you can have. So anything that has got antioxidants is really good for you. Try that. So that's important. Um, then having more of the good natural sweets rather than any artificial ones. So for instance, from the white sugar, I've changed to um, where I can possibly cut sugar, I've cut that and added some other um, sugar like um, like you know substituting the jaggery and things like that so well, i'm just giving you some examples that i have actually used and helped and honey is another thing that i use so incorporating the small things from the morning itself i started noticing that i i feel good about myself because for the first time in a lot of years that i started thinking about what I'm eating, what I'm actually, when I go grocery shopping, what I'm putting in my basket, which I probably never have um, taken much notice. I just go whatever I need. So that has, a, that has made a difference. Now, has that made an impact in, into my family? Yes, it has. Because when you are empowered, when you are taking that first move, you're empowering everyone around you. Like your family, uh, in my case, my little, two little ones, eight-year-old, four, you're inspiring them, you're inspiring your friends and um, my husband. So it becomes like um, everyone together are going into a healthy route. Okay. So... It is a kind of discipline. It is very hard, but it is hard. It will take time, but you will achieve it. You, I promise you will achieve it. You just have to be patient and consistent. You may want, oh, I, I can't live without this, and I can't live without fried um, fish. And yeah, a lot of people do have that, but try and incorporate the healthy lifestyle slowly but surely. Then, other thing I started doing is I found time for myself. The time that I, I didn't change anything else, but I had to somehow create that extra time for myself to look into what I love to do, to look into what my interests are. Why am I doing that? You know, why have suddenly gone back to dancing? Why have I gone suddenly into arts? It's because that's what keeps me happy. That's what's keeping me sane. And when I'm in my happy self, my productivity is better. When I'm doing everything that I love doing, when I'm actually um, meditate, I've done meditation or I've done yoga, I'm in a better mood and better mental state. And I can perform better at my work, the things that I actually do around the house or when I go uh, for public speaking or whatever that I do, I'm able to be more productive. So yoga has been one thing that I've definitely added. So I, I loved the fact that I was intentionally, intentionally focusing on uh, my mind and my thoughts and trying to control that thought and trying to detach my my inner self and come back. So in a way, it was kind of an exercise. Initially, my, my brain would go everywhere. You know, um, the, the teacher would say, you know, focus on your mat, your breathing. My mind will be still going, oh, I have, to, I have to ring this person. I haven't done that. I've got this list to do. I've got to submit that or I've got this deadline. So my mind will be like racing. And slowly, there was a point where it stopped racing. So when it starts to race, I was able to control it. It races. 
I try to bring it back. So I, then I realized, yes, I'm able to do that. So it really did help, not just in that session, but also slowly into my daily life as well. When I'm getting overworked and overstressed, I was able to actually just change my thoughts or give more positive thoughts to it, intentionally catch the thought and I could tell, okay, I'm not going to think about it or I'm not going to worry about it. Let's, let me think about something positive. Let me think about something that I can do, something that I can um, be more productive, you know, not the negative negativity that's dragging me down. So that really is helpful. And the interest, interest in arts and um, culture and the music, that aspect has really helped me in such a way that um, I like to say it's a soul that becomes so happy. When the soul is happy, then you're happy. When you're happy, your work is happy and people around you are happy. You communicate well. So that, in my experience, that's what really has helped me. So I do get asked a lot of questions about time management, time management. And the other thing um, people ask me is that um, it's amazing that you're able to do what you're doing. Uh, and then I get, I get told that you're very lucky. So am I lucky? Yes. I mean, I'm, I feel blessed to do whatever I can do. I don't think that I've achieved a lot. I'm doing a lot. There are things that I could do and there are things that I could do better. Um, but it's not just luck. It is the hard work that you put in. It is the hard work that you actually, um, that goes behind everything that you do, attention to detail and everything. Um, how do you manage time? The time management is important, but that doesn't mean that you have got 18 limbs and then you do everything together. That's not how you do it. You need to look at what are my skill set? What am I good at? Am I good at, say, marketing? Am I good at creating content? Am I good at the graphic designs? Stick to that. There could be things that you're not good at. Accept it. Identify your weakness. Accept your weakness. That other part is the one thing that you need help. You have to identify. If you don't identify, you do not accept that you are not good at everything, but there could be things that you're not good at. Let me seek help. The moment you accept that, um, that's my weakness. I need to be better at it. It's not my strength area. I'm going to ask help. That's the pathway for success. So you are getting the right help. And you're not then, also what you're doing is you're not getting burnt out. You're not getting stressed because you know that you are going to stick to where you are good at and what you can do. Yes, you need to learn. You can't just not learn another skill or you can, you may choose not to, but if, there's still opportunity, but you are accepting that that's something that you don't know, but you can learn towards it. So that will really help you to go a long way. So, so time management is important in terms of identifying what you can do and looking at the time and doing what you can do and also letting people know, get help, for the things that you can't do. So you've got to be honest. In, in my clinical practice, I don't claim to be an expert knowing everything because none of us can know everything, absolutely everything. But if you're being honest and if you're being truthful to yourself and to others and let people know where you are confused or where you are not sure, be honest and be upfront. You tell them, I'm not sure. Let me check. 
let me find out it is absolutely fine in back home when i when i grew up in india um i don't think you know people expect uh when they go to a doctor i mean i can talk about medical because i'm in that field uh they expect to know everything so i don't think um you would you'd see a doctor opening a book and checking something or but that is very normal in the western world so when i went from england to um to uh from india to england for my studies i was quite surprised to see that doctors actually if they are not sure they would be like even if you could be highly qualified doctors with several experience they'll be like i am not sure i'm going to check this for you and they do not hesitate they open they get the book out they check the medication or they check whatever they need to check or these days even more simple they click like we can actually google or check whatever and it's much better because you are not telling a lie and you're the chances of you you're accepting where your weak areas you are identifying your limitation and taking action to correct it and see that could be your learning need as well something that you're not sure of something you're not 100% or something that you've not learned so you have checked you've been honest you've checked and then that gives you an opportunity to learn more and to do the research or understand more about that uh subject so from my own experience i would say that time management it is a skill but it is not an unachievable skill and it is also quite important for you to stay healthy as well because when you uh when you're running late or or um when this waiting you get overworked and you get stressed uh so you would need to actually take deep breath see what is possible break it down do what you can do accept the fact that you may not be able to do everything and then move on but at one point you will be good at it so time management hard work yes it's important um uh for say anything else um from my experience i can share um i think these were the main things so um yeah please don't expect that you will be ever perfect there isn't any perfect state okay there is no perfect health management there's no perfect studying pattern there is no right or wrong wrong answer for anything but if you are able to do as much as you can that's the most a significant thing so being healthy staying healthy is extremely important um is there any questions that's come at all selvi ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am that was indeed a great source of inspiring and excellent speech ma'am that was an eye opener for healthy life uh, dear participants okay. if you have any questions you can post the questions now our resource person will answer for the questions Ma'am, there is one question, ma'am. As a doctor, as a doctor, how do you manage to deal with the emotional factors and your mental health, especially at this COVID time? Very, very difficult uh, situation. It is indeed. um this covid time managing as a doctor i tell you managing my own emotional health has also been challenging at the same time managing the colleagues your friends around you work colleagues and the patients so there's been three stages right so managing your own emotions is um uh, up to a certain extent when you keep doing all the things that i'm do uh, that i've mentioned before it becomes a bit easier but helping others is very crucial 
for that you got to remain strong and you got to understand that person's emotions as well so when people people have these issues uh the stress and emotions attached to the current situation um my my advice is is it something that you and i can fix no do we know where it's going to end no things are not under our control at the the circumstances the best way to look at it in my opinion is to take the steps that the health authorities have given you till now there's nothing else has worked we know that washing hands social distancing and reducing the number of outdoor where possible so other than that there's nothing has really worked so take those steps identify if you have got what i call or what we call clinical depression if you have clinical depression which means not sleeping properly you wake up very early or you can't sleep at all or you are staying awake um quite late not able to get into the sleep then you're not able to eat uh your appetite is gone you have no interest in outside life you lose your um you know the hobbies that you may have you lose all that uh then uh you lose weight so these are memories and other thing you know when you are when you're going through emotional issues and perhaps depression so if you have any of these you must actually consult a doctor you must talk to someone who would get the right help for you because with the having emotional problems there is tendency that this could progress into depression and the depression needs to be looked at because it can have serious consequence so how you would manage just manage what you all can do from at home is go through relaxation techniques listen to Uh, soft smooth soothing music make sure you sleep i mean regular time make sure you're able to sleep eat properly and if there's anything that is cause of stress try to talk to people try to discuss it don't internalize it because you will actually be this much you know like you'll be bottleneck and that's not good you need to talk to people you're in colleges you have great great teachers who would be more than help, happy to talk and help and point you to the right direction so that's what i would actually suggest every ma'am um if that's okay okay ma'am it's not happiness that brings us gratitude it's gratitude that brings us happiness I deemed it a pride and privilege to propose vote of thanks. Good evening to all. On behalf of the JBS College for Women Department of Commerce afternoon session, I am honored to thank the gathering. I place my sincere thanks to our eminent resource person, Dr. Tanya Nam, founder and director Ampton Medical Group Australia, for giving her consent in a busy schedule for the international webinar on health management, which is the need of the hour. It is enlightening and thoughtful webinar, ma'am. Our views on health management is very clear, and our guest made this webinar very inspiring and thoughtful. I express my gratitude to our principal, ma'am, Mrs. Shana Salmer, our AO, ma'am, Mrs. Matina Fasi, and our management for their continuous support in conducting this webinar. I render my special thanks to our after the department, Mrs. Hamidah Nisa, ma'am, for their support and encouragement. my special thanks to our organizing team for their untiring efforts and coordination to make this webinar successful my sincere thanks to my fellow mates for their support and encouragement finally i thank our wonderful participants for their active participation thank you all thank you ma'am thank you bye bye ma'am yes let us raise for the national anthem thank you ma'am Thank you for your excellent speech on health management. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you.
Thank you all the participants. Now we can leave the meeting.